Hello again, I'm back. I'm doing another video today because today is Christmas Eve and I want to make something ahead of time because it's also game night in our house. So I wanted to make meatballs with teriyaki sauce and then we'll have it with rice. But I wanted to make the teriyaki sauce and the meatballs ahead of time and then I can just reheat them when it comes time for supper so that cleanup is really easy and we can dive into game night, our favorite night of the week. Now, what I'm gonna do is, the teriyaki sauce is really the star of the show today. So, uh, I have a recipe on our website for meatballs, handmade meatballs. I did make handmade meatballs, but, and then I froze them. So I'm using frozen meatballs today and we're going to use this pan. When you cook meatballs, there is no requirement actually to grease the pan. So I always have a sink full of soapy water. Whenever I'm cooking, I always have a sink full of soapy water so that all of my used dishes go in there. If I put them in the dishwasher, then you know what? Odds are I'm going to need a dish and then I'm going to end up washing them anyways and I don't want to have to hunt for the dishes. So. You can do this a couple of ways. You can just not grease it and then once it's done, throw it in the soapy water and then it will soak and clean up really quick. Or you can line it with uh, alkan foil. I don't, it's not necessary, but you can. And then you just pull it off and then walk, give it a quick wash. Or you can also put on uh, a, um, what do you call it? A grate. You can put on one of these guys here. And then just put your meatballs on top of that and then uh, the fat will drain onto here and they won't stick. I don't think it's necessary, however, but it's up to you, not a problem. Now, I'm gonna get the meatballs. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. These are pretty large meatballs. I like making small ones and big ones, but because we're having just the meatballs, teriyaki sauce, and the rice and veg, then I, I use the bigger ones. And what I've done is I have, of course, my classic meatballs. It's, this is gonna be backwards for you, sorry. But whenever I make these things, I will put the instructions on how to cook them. The, how long it takes and the temperature. And then I freeze them on cookie sheets so that they don't stick together. And then I throw them in a bag and then when it comes time that I need them, I just pull them out. Easy peasy. So there's three of us and these are pretty big meatballs. So we go three, usually three, three meatballs a piece and then a couple extra. Um, so I'm just going to put them on here. I don't know why my sink is draining, but it's draining. I hope you can't hear that. One, two, three, and then a couple for good measure. Because we're also going to have other treats at our dinner. So our oven is preheated to 350. These just go in like this. And we're going to bring them over to the oven. and pop them in there we go now these cook for about 20 minutes oops there we are these cook for about 20 minutes depending on the size of them uh and i like to flip them once during the cooking so my timer goes on let's call it 20 minutes and we'll put these on for 10 minutes this the timer okay so the meatballs are in easy peasy easy peasy now let's get on to the teriyaki sauce now you can buy your teriyaki sauce oh first let's get these back in the freezer that would not be happy there we go okay so this, the beauty of this teriyaki sauce is it goes with the meatballs, it goes with chicken fingers like a dip, it goes with um, 
chicken wings. And um, there we go. You can even have a little tiny bit of it to add to uh, other sauces you're making or soups or whatnot. What I like to do normally is I'm a relatively lazy cook, so if I can make things ahead of time, I will. So what I do is I will make my meatballs way ahead of time, and then sometimes I'll make three or four batches of this teriyaki sauce, and then go and, and portion them out, and either attach them to the meatball bag, or keep a stack of them and freeze them flat on a uh, cookie sheet. And then you end up with these little frozen bags. And then whenever I want a sauce, I just pull it out of the freezer, reheat it, it's done, it's done. But if you had to make it for supper at the time, it is so, so, so easy. So these are, I'm just gonna turn you around. You can see our mise en place, because I always say, make sure you do a mise en place. So we've got water, honey, soy sauce. I use gluten-free because I have celiac, but you don't have to. A knob of garlic, gar or ginger, sorry, garlic cloves. In my recipe online, I say two, but these are pretty small. So, and then cornstarch and water for the slurry, and of course, brown sugar. So. The brown sugar, water, honey, soy sauce, ginger, and garlic go into the sauce. And then the cornstarch and water are mixed together to make the slurry to thicken it. Simple as that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the stove and we're gonna get, get shaken here. Hang on. Let me just see here. I want to make sure that you guys move it over here. There we go. Now, I'm just going to get this up so I can see what we're dealing with here. There we are. Okay. So we got a little bit of a glare from my light, but I think that'll be okay. We'll do it there. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we've got our pot and we're going to add our water and we're going to put the, the elements on eh, medium, say four. And then we're going to add, actually, before we turn the heat on, one thing that I wanted to do was bring you back over here because we need to deal with the garlic and the ginger. So let's just get that dealt with. And turn your... And we'll deal with the garlic and the ginger. Okay. Because we need to deal with the garlic and the ginger. Okay, so the way I deal with my garlic, I do have a garlic press. However, sometimes when you put it through a press, it ends up so minced that it actually disturbs the flavor. It's not so flavorful. So. All I do is I just do my garlic by hand. It's not a big deal. I chop off one end, I chop off the other end. And, you know, I could sit there and put my garlic into a bowl and shake it around or a jar or whatever. But, you know, whatever. I, I just don't. One thing I do do is I always make sure that I have a garbage bowl so that I can put my garbage in it and get it off my board. Okay? So, I'm going to I'm going to do this 
to the garlic and I'm just gonna peel it it's not a big deal I see so many kitchen hacks for doing garlic it's just like just do it if you buy the jar of minced garlic already sometimes you know what you're gonna have to use two or three times the amount because it's really not very strong sometimes you end up having to do that in the winter time because fresh garlic's not around but what I try to do is Buy it when it's on sale, when everybody's harvested it, and then pickle it. Or make a garlic paste and just freeze it. And then you'll have garlic whenever, whenever you want. But the thing is, the stuff in the jar can be a little bit deceiving because you end up using a heck of a lot more than you would with fresh garlic. So, first thing you do is get your garlic and just do a good old bang. See? There we go. And do that for this one. Just with the heel of your hand. Oh, and hope it doesn't shoot out. There we go. And then you just gather it all up and start cutting it up. That's all you have to do, really. And then just scoot it around until all nicely chopped up now for this sauce I don't want big chunks of garlic so I want it I want to cut it fairly small now quite frankly you would think that this takes so much longer than a garlic press but by the time I'm done with my garlic press and I got to clean it and uh, get all the garlic out of the little holes and whatnot ugh, by the time I'm done doing that I could have just done this Okay, so, and if you want to take this further and create a paste, then all you have to do is sprinkle a little bit of salt on here and then start pushing and smushing the garlic and it'll turn into a really nice paste. So, this is pretty much done. And I'm just going to scoot it over here and I'm going to deal with this ginger now normally I freeze my ginger I keep big knobs of it frozen so what I did was I took this out of the freezer and I melted it and and I thawed it out and you can see it's kind of um, soft and mushy now and very very juicy that's for darn sure but I find if I'm using ginger in a recipe, I just like to grate it or use a rasp to do it that way. But for this sauce, I need it not so fine. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take off this skin. And when it's like this, oh my gosh, it comes off so easy. So easy. And if you find ginger on sale, nice fresh ginger on sale, you literally just throw it in the freezer. It is so amazing. And then when I want to add some, I just have to grate it frozen or I will use a serrated knife to, to basically saw off a piece and then peel it. If you're peeling fresh garlic that hasn't been frozen, you can just use the side of a spoon. That's fine. So now what we're going to do, make sure your safety, be very careful. And we're just going to cut it like this. And then we're going to do the same thing as we did with the garlic. And we're just going to chop it up. Now, you don't want to bite into a big piece of ginger, so we're just going to... Oh, and that's our 10 minutes already for our meatballs. Okay, so let's have a look at our meatballs. I'm going to get my oven mitt out, and I'm going to get my tongs out so that we can turn these babies. See how quickly that was? Unbelievable. So, let's just see here. What we've got going on here 
is. Got my tongs. And I'm going to take these guys out. And we're just going to turn them. See? So they're nicely done on the bottoms. We're just going to turn them all over. And you notice they're not sticking, and that's only because they're done over here. They're nice and crispy. If you tried to turn them too soon, guess what? They would not turn over very easily at all. And that's part of the problem is people try to turn their meatballs way too soon. So these go back in the oven for another 10 minutes. And because I'm showing you how to make the teriyaki sauce, it's taking quite a bit longer. But uh, now you put the timer on for another 10 minutes. And then we're back to our ginger. And we're just going to keep dicing it nice and small. Now, if you want to do the rocking motion, you keep your one hand on the top and you just let it rock back and forth and then just drag it and drag it and then keep chopping. Drag it and drag it and chop. Drag and drag. That way you get a pile of it. And if you ever wanted to make garlic paste, it's the same thing. You just start smooshing it with your knife. And you can add a little bit of salt onto the board to help you grip onto the ginger. Okay, so we've got our ginger. And these are not too big that you're going to end up with big chunks in your teriyaki sauce. Okay, so let's get back to the teriyaki sauce. We've already got our water. In the sauce. So let me just see where my camera's up here so you guys can have a good view. Okay. Let's just see. Where are we here? I want you guys to be able to see it really well. Going the wrong way? Hang on, because it's mirrored, right? There we are. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. All right. So now we've got our water in here. Got our water in here. And what we need to do is just start dumping our stuff. And this is why we use a mise en place because it goes so quickly. We're going to add our honey. Let's get our honey in there. Oh, and you know what we also need? We need, which I forgot, and you'll You'll call me out on it if I don't mention it because it is on the recipe. We need some red wine vinegar. Um, how much red wine vinegar? Yes, we need half a teaspoon of red wine vinegar because I was just noticing that we've got this lovely sweetness going on. We've got the sweetness. And we've got the saltiness of the soy sauce. That's why we're not adding more soy or, uh, any more salt. But we also need 
a little bit of acid to go in here as well. So we're gonna, we don't need much. We only need a half a teaspoon of an acid. Red wine vinegar is fantastic for this. So we just need half a teaspoon. And then, so put that away. And we're gonna have the element on there. Am I noticing anything going on here? I don't really see anything going on here. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right, so we've got the element on about a four, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're just going to stir everything together. Make sure you got some good light going on here. Okay, so all we have to do is bring this to a boil and we want to add our, before it comes up, we're going to add our ginger and we're going to add our garlic let's just see if we can get a little bit more light on this subject here there we go okay so we're going to wait for this to come up to a boil in the meantime, we're going to take and make our cornstarch slurry. And all that is, it's extremely easy. It is just equal amounts of cornstarch and water. That's it. So we're going to dump this into this. Take a, either a fork or a little whisk. And we're just going to stir it together and it will make this little paste. See? And we're going to set that aside until our sauce has come to a boil. Okay? So we can put it up to high to get, get things going here. And what will happen is the vinegar or the um, ginger and the garlic are going to soften up. Everything is going to come together flavor wise. So I'll just let that come together. And what you'll notice is that the cornstarch slurry. Uh, it will it will separate a little bit if it's left on the counter for too long and it'll end up with this water on the top and the cornstarch will flow to the bottom. So just give it another stir before you're ready to use it. That's all you need to do. Okay. Now, isn't that funny? We've only got like two and a half minutes left on our meatballs. These are pretty big meatballs though. Normally uh, at 10 minutes with smaller meatballs, the bottoms are done a lot more than those ones were. So that's fine. Uh, it probably will end up being 25 minutes, which is fine. And remember this sauce can be made way ahead of time. And then you can add a little bit more of the different things or a little bit less, it doesn't matter. You just let it come, come to a boil. And in the meantime, what you've done is you put away all your dishes into the sink. And so it, while you're waiting for that to boil, then you can just wash up your dishes, put them in the rack, and they're all set. And then you don't have to worry about having this disaster area of dishes. Okay, so we can see now it's starting to steam a little bit. And I'm just gonna take this out so it gives it a chance to do its thing. But you can see amazing bits of um, 
ginger and garlic and oh and after even after a few days if you were to freeze this and then thaw it out you would find that the the flavors are so smooth it's lovely and it's just the right amount of acid and sweet and salt it's fantastic and again you can use the gluten-free ingredients if you need to make it gluten-free and I found amazingly I have found generic soy sauce that is gluten-free and that is my go-to and then I can get the reduced sodium soy sauce which is even better uh, and then the only thing you have to consider is how much salt is in your recipe so if you're using uh, reduced sodium I still don't salt very much if it's reduced sodium because it's still really high in sodium. But if I'm using ones that where it's not reduced sodium, oh my goodness, I avoid salt in the recipe if I can because it ends up being just too much sodium. Okay, so that is starting to make some noise. There goes our meatball timer. So we're going to have... A look at these guys oh sizzle 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 so here's our meatballs let me just get my my glove so I can show you my meatballs here they are now you notice how much browner they are on the bottom here? Okay, so I'm just going to flip these guys again because they're pretty big meatballs. And we're going to get them back in the oven. And I'm going to set the timer for another five minutes, I think. Because, like I say, the recipe that I have online are for meatballs that are a bit smaller. They're only about an inch. These are a little bit bigger than that. So we're going to stick these back in the oven, set the timer for another five minutes, and lo and behold, our sauce is boiling away. Look at that. Fantastic. Hopefully I don't steam everything up. You can see this. Now, if we want to have a look see Add our sauce. We will see how runny it is. Yeah. Okay. So this is where the cornstarch slurry comes in. Let's turn the heat. Oopsie. Turn the heat down a little bit, just a titch. Now this I can feel the cornstarch on the bottom. It's stuck on the bottom, so that's fine. We just give it another stir. And the trick to a good cornstarch slurry, there we go. Did you get your other whisk? And you're ready to go. And you gotta pour this in and whisk right away. And the beauty of a cornstarch slurry is it makes your sauce really shiny. It's amazing for that. Okay, so this is way thicker already. See how it coats the spoon now? Right? It wasn't coating the spoon before. Now it's coating the spoon. And the more we boil it, and we only need to do this for a minute or two, the thicker it'll become. If you want to have, I mean, a lot thicker syrup or sauce than this, then you can easily make uh, another, you can make another cornstarch slurry with one tablespoon cornstarch to one tablespoon of water. I'm just going to use the last bits of this. But you probably wouldn't use it all. You may just use an extra little portion of it. But you certainly wouldn't use it all. Okay, so, do you know what? That's all there is to it. That sauce, my friends, is done. Absolutely done. With all of this amazing um, 
ginger and garlic in there. It's fantastic. So, like I say, if you want it to reduce a little bit and get a little bit thicker, you can leave it here just for a minute. I actually like it this thick. Now, if you make a second slurry and it gets too thick, don't freak out. You just need to add a little bit of water just to thin it out a little bit. Okay, so this is done. We're going to put this on the side. It's all done. Turn the heat off. Bob's your uncle. The sauce is done. Now, oh, here we go. And turn you around. Now, if you were going to do that uh, ahead of time, I would say, and let's say you want to double or triple the recipe, which is too easy. Absolutely do that. Um, this is going to make you about one, one and a half cups or so. Getting, getting fairly close to one and three quarter cups, right? And that, that will do it. So that's quite a bit of sauce. But if you're going to double or triple, then sit there and just divide it up into one and a half cup portions. And put it in your freezer bags. Of course, write down what it is, teriyaki sauce, when you made it. If you have your labels, then you can fill them out and tape it to this. And then lay it flat on a freezer sheet, or a cookie sheet, sorry. And then you have one, two, three, freeze it. They'll end up frozen flat like this, skinny. And then you'll have sauce for days. Sauce for days. Works out extremely well. Now, we have had our meatballs in for an extra five minutes. And they are about to beep again. Just have a look. See, oh, and now they're really sizzling well. Let's have a look at these puppies. Now, for the sake of, oh, here it is, safety. I use my glove. It's so much better. Okay, so here's our meatballs. Our meatballs. See how nice and brown they are on the bottom side. Now, the trick is going to be let's test them for temperature. Let's test them for temperature. They need to be a minimum of 160 because it's ground meat. Some say 165 or 170, depending. Now, I'm running at about 160 on the nose. And I'm just inserting my thermometer into the meatball. That's all I'm doing. I'm at 164. So, do I like how brown they are, etc.? I'm kind of liking this, actually. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, the dish I'm going to serve the meatballs and sauce in. I'm going to get that dish, and I'm actually going to combine the two. Because we have the nice crispy outside of the meatballs. So, it will take the sauce quite nicely. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take our meatballs and we're going to put them in to the dish. I picked a pretty big dish actually. Okay, and then this just goes right into the sink. Boom, done. And then I'm going to Pour the sauce, and that 
dish is going straight into the sink. And then let's have a look at our sauce. Now, here we have this amazing sauce. Oats, these meatballs so yummy and then it'll be perfect for on rice and I like my sauce this consistency because it is perfect on top of the rice as well and then basically I put the lid on And I would just let it cool down. Just let it cool down and then pop it in the fridge and then reheat it for when supper is. And then what would happen is uh, if you were going to make meatballs and teriyaki sauce and freeze it, my suggestion would be uh, you can freeze the meatballs raw. And then in a separate bag, and even staple them together, have the sauce. Or you can make the meatballs and cook the meatballs and freeze the meatballs and then freeze the cooked meatballs. And then you would have, uh, I would even go so far as to add the sauce to the meatballs and then freeze it in one bag. And then you're all set. You, and then all you have to do is take it out of the bag or your container and reheat it. That's it. Bring it up to reheat it nicely. Everything's done. Uh, and if I'm so inclined, I will just sit there and make a bunch of them. And uh, I mean, look at how quick that was. It took 25 minutes to do the meatballs. And really, it takes about seven minutes, five minutes to do the sauce when you're not trying to show everything. Best thing to do is just make sure you have all your ingredients out and uh, ready to go and then you dump them all in do your cornstarch slurry thicken it up and, and you can do the cornstarch slurry for any sauces that you need to thicken just make a quick slurry one tablespoon cornstarch one tablespoon cold water and give it a stir and in whatever sauce you're trying to thicken just make sure it's it's hot it's boiling and then you, you add the slurry and whisk away and you'll see it thicken right before your eyes. You can do that with gravy too. And I do that with a lot of my gravies because I don't use flour in my gravy. And I just use a little bit. And if you're concerned about the GMO cornstarch, you can find non-GMO cornstarch. That's easy. I find it's there in my grocery store. And I use that to help thicken all my sauces. Okay. So, you've got a teriyaki sauce, good for chicken and meatballs and dips and all kinds of things. Get it perfected to how you like. Adjust the seasoning. Add a bit of hot spice if you like, if, if you're so inclined. Um, get, get the amount of ginger and the amount of garlic right down to how you like it. And then make sure you write it down, keep it, and make batches in advance. And then people will be amazed at how quickly you can throw together a sauce yay um that's it for now i'm gonna go off and uh get the rest i'm gonna make my rice and you know what it is quarter to one in the afternoon i'm not gonna be stressed at all come supper time it's gonna be awesome and game night it's gonna be so much fun and much less stress okay i will talk to you guys later have a good day see you at the next video